The Holy Gospel, a story according to John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do, so now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and I know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You may have noticed that I pray that same prayer every time I preach. For me, it's a special verse in Scripture that helps me to ask God to let the words that I speak be God's words, that God speak through me, and that not just be my words, but that be what God would want to, to people to hear. And I also think it's wonderful to pray that people hear what God wants them to hear. And so that's why I preach, I, where I pray that verse every time. But you know, prayer is a tricky thing sometimes. I get asked a lot of questions about prayer from a lot of different people. Some of the, some of the regular questions are, well, why, didn't, why didn't it work? I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and yet this happened. Um, and some people ask, I mean, how does it work? I don't even understand how prayer could possibly work. How can God hear everybody all at the same time and it all makes sense and it all happened? Some people ask, does it matter? And some people just simply want to know, how do I pray? I, I don't feel like I really understand or know how to pray. So how do I pray? For some people, faith is strengthened by prayer. And maybe that's because they've experienced a lot of prayers that have been answered. Or maybe it's because they believe so strongly in prayer that to pray helps them feel stronger in their faith. But for some people, faith can be tested or lost because of prayer. Some, some people might pray, if this, then this. Some people might question again, why, why didn't it work? Why should I have faith if this prayer wasn't answered? Or maybe there's just too many questions and it's too hard for us to understand what prayer is. And so they just give up. And yet we're called to pray, aren't we? We are called to pray. God mandates prayer in the law. God encourages us to pray. God invites us to pray. And God promises to hear and to listen. Ask and it will be granted. So it's no surprise then that prayer is often hard for people because we often experience it as this mystical, holy thing that we dare not get wrong. I have to admit that even as a pastor, I have my own questions about prayer and wonderings in times where I doubt. But here's also what I know. In the Hebrew Bible, which is essentially our Old Testament, prayer is a major part 
I tried to think about any book that didn't have prayer, and I couldn't think of a single Old Testament book that didn't have at least some form of prayer. And nearly every person was praying at some point. Not, not every single person, but nearly every person that I could think of. Even in the book of Esther, which makes no mention of God whatsoever by name, even in that book, God's people pray. David wrote the Psalms as prayers that could be sung, just like our hymns. Our hymns are sort of prayers that are sung. They had lament, they had joy, they had thankfulness, they had sorrow, they had anger. Jacob prays to God before asking for his brother Esau's forgiveness. He, we know that Esau or Jacob stole a lot from his brother and tricked him and his father quite a bit. And so Jacob is afraid to ask for forgiveness and prays to God. Hannah, in the Bible, prays so fervently that everybody thinks she's drunk. She's not. She's praying fervently for a son, for a child. And she prays so hard, she tells God that if she's granted a child, she'll even give him up to the temple to be a priest. Mordecai, in the book of Esther, is the one who gathers all the people to pray and to fast as Esther goes to the king and risks her life to beg for the freedom and the lives of her own people, the Israelites. And all the prophets pray at some point or another, and most of them, if you read through, are saying, please, God, don't make, this, don't make me do it. <laughs> but they do. And in today's gospel, Jesus prays. Chapter 17 in the book of John is a prayer that Jesus prays. And where this happens in the timeline is that in chapter 13, he's washed the disciples' feet, and he's taught them about servanthood and love, and then he shared some other stories with them. And now, right before he is arrested and put on trial, and then the next day put to death, that night before, Jesus prays. Now, in some Gospels, Jesus prays in the garden, and we hear Jesus praying, um, take God, take this cup from me if it be your will, but if not, I'll do what you need me to do. In this prayer, however, we, we're not really sure if it happened in the garden or if it happened in the upper room or where it happened, but in this prayer, Jesus prays that God brings him to himself, that God shows him the glory that he's promised. And then he also prays for these disciples, for these people of faith that have followed him and learned from him and come to believe in God even more strongly because of Jesus. He prays for these disciples and he prays for God to protect them and to guide them so that he can, they can carry on the work that he started after he's gone because he knows his time is finished there. If you read further in chapter 17, at the very end, this is what I find the most amazing. Jesus prays a prayer for those who will come to faith, even though they weren't there to follow him in person, those who've come to faith by the witness and the testimony of the people that were there. So let me be clear about this. On the night that Jesus is betrayed and arrested and tortured and then killed the next day, Jesus prayed for you and for me. That's pretty incredible. Prayer is so important in the Gospels that not only does Jesus pray regularly, but he teaches us to pray all the time. Jesus goes to the mountains or to the desert to pray himself. Jesus gathers people to pray. Jesus teaches us in, in the Sermon on the Mount how to pray. He lays out the words of the Lord's Prayer. He teaches us to ask. And the witness of his prayers, when we read the prayers that he prays, that's a teaching moment for us as well. That's a witness to how we pray. And so how is it that Jesus has taught us to pray? Jesus teaches us to ask. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. Ask, and 
what you ask for will be granted. Jesus teaches us to pray not only for others, but for ourselves. Jesus, in this prayer, asks for prayer for himself. Jesus, as he prays in the garden, prays for God to think of him. It's not wrong to pray for yourself. A lot of times when I ask people for prayer requests, they're hesitant to, to name themselves because they think somehow you're not supposed to pray for yourself or it's selfish. No, it's not. Don't be afraid to ask for prayer for yourself. It's okay. It's also important that we remember to think of others. So we do both at the same time. We can pray for others. Jesus teaches us to be thankful in prayer, to share our sorrows and our anger with God. Jesus teaches us to pray by ourselves, but also with others in community. Today in the gospel, he talks about how prayer makes us one that prayer unites all of God's followers. It's what makes us one. And I love the idea that today all across the U.S. people are praying the same prayers as we are. We're all praying as one voice together. We are to pray humbly and thoughtfully. Jesus teaches us to pray in secret. In one of the stories he talks about, don't be like the hypocrites and pray out loud just to show others that you're praying or show others how pious you are. It doesn't mean don't pray in front of other people and don't pray out loud. I think what Jesus is getting at is pray honestly and truly because you want to and pray with your heart. Don't just do it because you, you think you're supposed to or it looks good. Prayer is like our phone call to God, and that can be just the two of us, or it can be many more people, but it's that conversation that keeps us in relationship with God. It unifies us with God and all God's people. So finally this morning, as if Christ teaching us how to pray isn't enough, in Romans, Paul writes that the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. So even when or if we get our prayers a little wrong, if it's maybe a little bit selfish or maybe not what we really need but kind of what we want, or maybe it's just not something that really needs to be prayed for at the time, the Spirit makes known to God what our true prayer is. It doesn't mean that we're praying wrong. It just means that sometimes what we really need and what we really mean is deeper inside and we don't know how to say it and the Spirit makes that known to God. So then I ask, why are we afraid to pray? Perhaps it's because prayer really is hard to understand. It's truly mystical and it's powerful. And if we're honest, prayer is very vulnerable. Prayer reflects the deepest parts of ourselves, and to name that out loud in front of others can be very vulnerable. But prayer is also faithful. Even when we feel like we can't be or we, we aren't faithful, prayer helps us be faithful for each other and for ourselves. I ask you today, what does it mean to you that on the night Jesus was betrayed and arrested and sent to die, he prayed for you? Will you please pray with me now? God, you teach us to pray. Grant your spirit to us and help us to keep in conversation with you. Help us to pray with others in community. Help us pray alone in relationship. Draw us together. Make us one in prayer. In your name we pray.